If I log this user off now and log on to the same desktop as the, the accountant, So back on XP Desktop 1, this time rather than logging on as the engineer, I'm going to log on to the same machine as the accountant. So again, we're still loading the same mandatory profile as far as AD is concerned, so it's nice and fast to log the user on. But because this user is part of the finance user group, they've got the finance background set, they've got the stereotypical finance application firing up. They've got different icons on the desktop, and if I go to the start menu, you can see that we're actually forcing a classic start menu here, so we're actually applying group policy, but this is using Environment Manager to do that. If I go into the Programs menu, this user's got the same access to the accessories, same access to Adobe Reader, but if you look in the Microsoft Office area, they've got access to all the products. If I go into My Computer, you'll see that we've got the Finance Map Drive, and also if you look in the Printers area, this group of users has the Finance Printer. So, the same desktop is customised one way to so look and feel like a, a finance desktop for the finance users and an engineering desktop for the engineering users. So how are we doing things different then? As I said, we're not, we're not having to manage complex login scripts, which all execute in sequence, and we're not actually managing the group policy in the same methods as a, the standard way within Windows. So let's see how we're actually managing this within our, our GUI. If I open up the Environment Manager GUI, if you're actually a, if you're a fan of the Office 2007 consoles, you'll be a fan of the R console. It has the, the ribbon style. If we look across the left-hand side here, I mentioned that we're using the mandatory profile and we're using that as an initial building block for Environment Manager to start creating that desktop. So what we actually need are these things called the trigger points. We have two types of trigger point. We have the computer trigger points and user trigger points. Now standard methods of uh, logging scripts for do it, applying policy in the past will use the log on trigger point and the log off trigger point. We have these additional trigger points, process start, process stop, network connect disconnect, session reconnect disconnect and session locked and unlocked. So I'll show you the advantages of having those additional trigger points shortly. If we first have a look at the types of actions that we can do with Environment Manager, if we go to the actions list at the top, Environment Manager actually starts with a blank config. Unlike the other products, Application Manager and Performance Manager, which come with an out-of-the-box config. To make it easier, although our products are all wizard-driven anyway, we've got a quick setup wizard. So the types of things that you might be doing in every single one of your configs, you can use the quick setup wizard to, to apply those. So doing such things as forcing the use of a classic start menu and hiding the clock. You may want to do that in all your environments, so you just click, tick the boxes, Click next and finish, and that will create your node structure and the, and the actions that go with that. If you want to create them manually, we're using just the standard, the standard console. If we look in the registry area, we can create, delete, set values, delete values, and import registry files. In the files and folders area, we can copy, delete, move, rename, modify file attributes and folders. Here we can actually see that we've got the folder redirection as well. Folder redirection, we can redirect any folders within the user's profile. The drives and printers, we can map and unmap drives and printers. We can also play around with the ODBC connections. In here, as well as being able to manipulate and to customise locally installed applications, we also have the ability to do this with streamed applications. We have an AppV wizard which is integrated into our console where we can actually hook into the the AppV OSD, so into the secure bubble, but we can also do this with Citrix streamed applications as well. So it's not just the AppV that we can do it with, we're working with Citrix and also uh, VMware to jump into their bubble as well. We have the ability to, as you saw, to execute applications at startup at any of the trigger points and also run custom actions. Here we have the group policy area. Now one thing I mentioned was that we're not having to manage complex login scripts, which are, all, which are seen to be a, more of a third line task. As well with group policy, this is something that's seen as a group, uh, 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 as a third line type task because it's a, usually the group policy is applied to a user OU or a computer OU. So you don't necessarily want someone in second line messing around and affecting everybody. 
Well, what we also do is to make this easier is uh, we've integrated it into our wizard now. So if we go into set ADMX policy, because I'm on a 2008 machine here, rather than the administrator having to know which ADM template or which custom ADM template the actual policy action applies in, all we do with the environment manager is point to the folder which contains all your ADMs and all your custom ADMs and we click add. What that actually does there, it brings all the different policies into one window. So it's grabbed all the ADM templates and brought them into one window for display. To make it even easier, we have a filter button at the bottom. So if I wanted to do something such as remove something from the start menu, if I type in remove into the filter button, the filter area, now everything that's in the window is to do with removing something. So go to start menu and taskbar. Here is everything that we can remove from the start menu. So if I just click on there, go remove the network connections, we have the explanation and we can just enable that and OK. So we've made it very easy to actually understand where those, those policies are. But as I said, usually this applies to a user OU or a computer OU. So we've made it nice and easy to find, but we obviously don't want to apply this to everybody. So let's have a look at our conditions list. So in our conditions list, we have the directory memberships area. So we can apply any of our actions, including the, the, uh, the group policies, to a user OU or a computer OU. But we can actually look in the user area there, we can actually apply them to a single username if you wanted to, so apply it to a test user only. So you can apply your group policy to a test user for instance. You can apply it to a user group, anyone that is or is not an admin. If we look at the session and client conditions, we can look at the client connection protocol, the client IP address, the screen resolution, computer area we can look at the computer domain, computer group, even down to a MAC address level. So, Thinking of the actions there, applying any of those actions, including group policy actions, to a single MAC address if you wanted to, so it can be very granular. Looking back down the left-hand side here, I mentioned the trigger points. Everything that happened when my user logged on was performed at logon. So these were the logon actions, and we've said that group uh, that login scripts all apply at logon and they all apply at log off, but we've got these additional trigger points. So what's the benefit of having these? If I jump back to my user who's still currently